so, what is it? Wave particle duality, and why am I going to try to explain it in six minutes to you? Uh, it's possible that some of you have heard of this mechanic where light sometimes behaves as a wave until it's measured, at which point it becomes a particle. It's one of those quantum mechanical things that you know seem very strange. Uh, but a lot of you may have not. Uh, by a show of hands, who here thinks they will never understand some quantum cool mechanic effect like this? Yeah, a good portion of us. Well, lucky for you, this is wrong. Uh, and I'm willing to bet a whole lot of what you've heard about quantum mechanics has similarly been mystified and overcomplicated. So why am I qualified to tell you about quantum mechanics or wave particle duality? Uh, just real quick. Uh, for the past three years, I've been working as a quantum uh, optics experimentalist. I'm also a physics major with AMO specialization, which is atomic molecular optical. Uh, in other words, it's, it's this exact kind of thing. So I've been doing it for a little while. Um, so uh, real quick overview. Uh, I want to explain these kinds of effects and why they're not magical. You know, wave particle duality and other, hopefully, uh, other quantum effects. So real quick, we'll go over uh, what particles and waves are. Uh, we'll go over the nature of waves. And then we'll go over the wave particle duality and what it actually is. All right. So you might have been told uh, if you went out of high school, you definitely learned at some point that light is an electromagnetic wave. You might have also heard that light is a particle, or specifically a photon, which is a quantum particle. Uh, but you know, what on earth does that mean? What's a wave? So typically when we think of waves, we think of a distribution of particles and a wave is a motion through those particles. So it requires particles in order to function, right? Uh, but what is interesting about wave that set it apart, set it apart from particles? Uh, specifically, the uh, interesting thing you will need to know for this is that uh, waves exhibit interference, which is something you don't see anywhere else in nature which is where when you have uh, waves complementing each other like this, the amplitudes add and you get a larger wave. If you have uh, waves that don't complement each other, the, you get destructive interference, and so the waves subtract. And in a lot of cases, you get nothing as a result. So why is this important? Well, this brings us to Thomas Young in 1801 or 1802 when he published his paper over 200 years ago. Uh, where he said, all right, if light is a particle, uh, such as it's described frequently with photons, then it won't have this wave interference pattern. So he set up an experiment that without a doubt would prove if photons were waves. So the experiment looks a little bit like this. You set up two slips, you, set, you pass a beam of light through it, and it's a little difficult to see on this projector, uh, but the result is light comes out of the two slits, and in certain places, you will get constructive interference. I don't know how to use the laser point on this. Uh, but you'll get constructive interference in certain places, uh, and then destructive interference in other places. And the result is a pattern like this. Where the waves align, you get bright spots. Where the waves uh, you know, don't align, you get dark spots. And so that's just a demonstration of what's happening now. So now he said, what happens if you weaken the beams that you only send one photon at a time? A photon is the smallest possible amount of light that you can ever have. So if you send one photon at a time through the slits, you still get the same interference pattern. Each one detection just adds up to one spot on the detector because it's one quantum. That's all it is. It seems like it behaves like a particle. But when you pass it you know, thousands of times, you'll see the same interference pattern. So what's happening? That means that these single photons must be interacting with themselves, must be waves. A wave nature in a single photon, a single particle. If you remember, if you look back at the waves, it seems that waves are typically made up of particles. So that seems to not make sense. But what about if you send particles like that? Like for example, if you have water, it's a wave of H2O molecules. Well, the same thing happens, it finds out, and de Broglie proved this, is that all particles are, behave like waves. This is what's known as the wave-particle duality. 
And so you have a wavelength, this is bit of math, but uh, you get a wavelength if you just take a constant, which is Planck's constant, over the momentum of the particle. And you can find the wavelength of anything, including water molecules or including all of us. We all have a wavelength. So you might be thinking, okay, this doesn't make sense. Uh, what if you send something that's rigid, like we know acts like a particle, like a sphere or this remote or something, and you shoot it at the same wall with the same slits? So Richard Feynman famously presented this in his lecture and set up this thought experiment. And what he finds is that the waves are so small of these particles, he specifically did this with what he called bullets, They're just tiny little round things. They're so small that no detector, including our eyes, eyes are detectors, so are the atoms in your fingers. If you interact with anything, you know, you're detecting it. But there's no detector that can uh, feel the individual waves of these larger particles. And so what it looks like to a detector is just this big curve, or in other words, it's indistinguishable from a particle at that point. That means all things are waves. So how do we describe photons then? Well, we can model them for you know, similar particles. We can model them as wave packets, little packets of waves, in other words, or through mathematics, which you don't have to pay attention to this. All that's important is that you know that this equation, which is famous, the famous Schrodinger equation, which you always hear about in quantum mechanics, gives you that wave. So in other words, quantum mechanics the foundation of quantum mechanics, everything that it's built off of, which is mostly this equation, is just telling you that waves and particles are the same and that you can model all particles as waves. What are those waves? Well, we call them waves of probability. So in conclusion, uh, light does not act solely as a wave or a particle. And in fact, it cannot be modeled as either one just by itself because it can only be modeled at the fundamental level as a wave of probability, these wave packets. And in fact, all things are built like that. And that is all that quantum mechanics is. So I know I covered a lot, but that's probably, I guess that was just too dark to see. I know I covered a lot, um, but if there's you know one thing that you all leave here thinking, uh, I hope that you just remember to be inquisitive and remind yourselves that there's no reason to resign yourself to not knowing something because you're all capable of knowing a lot more than we think. So, thank you.